because calculating resolution is very important. Okay, so all I want to know is flow rate per least significant bit. So you divide the range of the variable. There's the maximum, the minimum is zero. The, by the way, the minimum is not always zero because when we were measuring speaker positions, we had a negative position. So it would be important to subtract off that minimum position and not the zero. Okay, so there's this many ranges, this many, this range of GPM that we want to measure divided by the flow rate, uh, flow rate excuse me, the, the number of, uh, of uh, uh, bit transitions we can get. So 256 less zero. And this is least significant bits or counts or whatever you want to call it. It's basically the number of steps that we can have. Okay. Now, should I put 255 in here instead of zero? It really doesn't matter. Okay. I probably should. But really all I'm saying here is there's this many different levels. Okay. Anyway, take that ratio in your calculators, if you would, please. And let's see what kind of resolution we have. 100,000 divided by 256 comes out to what? How much? 390.625. 390. Uh, so 390.6, so this is about 391 GPM per least significant bit. So the, the, the flow rate has to increase by 391 GPM before we detect that change. Does that make sense? Now, one more thing here. Let's say that your boss looks at this and you work at the Hoover Dam and he says, this is, this is silly. There's no point in this. We never have zero GPM. The minimum we ever have is 50,000 GPM. So I don't care about zero GPM because it's never going to happen. Okay? Then what you do to decide on your or calculate your resolution is simply plug in the different minimum, 50,000. GPM. Not surprising, what, what, not surprising that what happens is your resolution doubles. It's going to 391, no longer 391. Let me compute it in my head real quick. That should be what, uh, 782? And so we just double our resolution by reducing the range. Now you can increase the resolution even farther if you add more significant bits or if you add more bits. Did I make it? I think you went the wrong way. I think it's supposed yeah. to be 195. Yeah. I'm sorry, you're right. That's I would cut it in half. You're right. So now we're, you're right, because it should be more sensitive, right? So now we can detect a, a change of about 200 GPM, okay? Now, how do you do this? How do you sample a signal? Well, there are, there are devices called analog to digital converters. Anybody ever heard of an AEC? All the ECTs raise their hands, right? And an analog to digital converter is something that you actually have on your computer. The sound card that accepts the microphone input will detect the, the small voltage signal being generated by that microphone when I'm talking to it, and it will actually sample it. So it will measure the position of the voltage versus time and send that information to the, the computer. So basically what it has to do, it has to measure the voltage, and you do that with an ADC analog to digital converter. Okay. It's pretty simple. And then in order to convert back, you have to use what's called a DAC, a digital to, audit, to analog. And your CD-ROM drive, or your CD-ROM on your computer or the sound card on your computer also has a DAC. And what it does is it takes digital information and generates a voltage signal based on that that just follows it. The PLCs that are over there that have analog inputs have analog to digital converters. And if there are any analog outputs on them, then they must also have digital to analog converters. So what's the point of an analog to digital converter? Why do we have them? Why do we need them? so that you can take information from the real world and change it to numbers that the PLC can deal with. The point of a digital to analog converter is to take a digital number of a bunch of ones and zeros and change it to an analog signal to the outside world. Maybe it's, a, uh, I don't know, maybe it's the intensity of a light or the speed of a motor or something like that. Maybe it's an analog signal. Okay, I know there were some questions on homework, so let me uh, address that. Uh, is there anything else we need to go over before I uh, read it? Okay, well, we still have about 15 minutes, so if there are no questions to me directly, what I'm going to do is just come around and help you. If you've already finished your homework, uh, you're welcome to go. Uh, or if you want to ask me about any now and then, let me pause you. You can really mess yourself up in this class by 
completing the homework, never letting you see it, and then just going on assuming that you've done it right. In this homework, it's designed so that you, the goal is to make you question things, to make you dig deeper and understand. So if you just blasted through the homework and didn't understand the point of getting it from some of the questions, you should ask me about it. Okay? So it's up to you what you do now, but I'll go around and help anyone.